So one day we decide to make the, the Coke, the syrup. We start serving a lot of restaurants, and I don't know how the Coca-Cola company found out about it. Says, if you're not gonna discontinue, we're gonna report you and I'm gonna send you back to Brisbane. <laughs> you don't get scared, so discontinue. So you know I've been reaching out to a ton of entrepreneurs in the area, and I've been asking if they'd be interested in doing interviews or podcasts or vlogs, and just talk about their businesses and their careers, their life, maybe if they're a real estate agent doing some walkthroughs. So I've actually been quite surprised with the percentage of people that actually actually uh, got back to me and said that they'd love to do it. So uh, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy these uh, interviews in the next week. But for now, we have to get ready to go to the gym and then make a long drive back to my hometown. You good? Hello. Oh, there's another dog. There's Ozzy. <laughs> so just before I show you the interview for this video, I just wanted to mention something was that we ran into some technical difficulties while recording this video, both with the audio, the cameras, and kind of environmental factors. So for the first minute or so that you're about to hear, uh, my audio when I talk is a little bit jumbled and it is throughout the, the whole interview. However, I don't do much talking past the first minute or minute and a half, but the rest of the video is mainly my grandparents talking about their, their life and business. The first half of the interview, we tackle you know their childhood growing up in a war zone and so on. And then the last half is more of starting their businesses, personal finance advice, and their thoughts on the current uh, state of young people today in Canada. So I promise you guys for the next interview, the audio quality will be much better and so will the video quality. But this one is still good enough past the first minute where it is worth uploading because there's a ton of value that you can get from this video and lots of perspective as well. So here's the interview. So I'm here with my lovely grandparents. Now I call you guys Bubba and Dewey, but you guys, your names are Nikki and, is it Anthony or Danny? Anthony, but Danny. Danny. Danny is what you get. Okay, so sorry, I want to ask you guys a few questions and thank you, thank you very much for sitting right. down with me and tolerating this 30 minute setup that I've had here. So first thing I want to ask you is, so you guys were born in what, the 30s in Greece? I was born in 1937. And what were you doing? 1932. And you guys grew up, uh, uh, not too far from each other in Greece, right? About but 47 kilometers apart. So you were in Agios Pantelimonas? Yeah, Agios no? Pantelimonas. In yeah, Florida. In Florida. And so Bubba is kind of like the, the small village. It grew up in a small, a, one of the most beautiful villages I've ever seen. But Andui is like the, the midtown kind of city boy in yep. Greece. Yep. With a giant hill and like a nice cross. At the, top, at, of the at top of the mountain, yeah. But um, okay, so I just want to ask you guys, what was it like, kind of growing up for you guys in Greece yeah, when you guys were kids? For me, it was tough because when the war, the second war started, well, my brother had a little accident, and we moved. We went to Macedonia at that time, Yugoslavia. My father was left north with my older brother. And we were left in the village, my mother, my grandmother, and my younger sister. And for political reasons, just because my uncle was a big communist guy, we suffered a lot. I was like with my family kicked out from the village for four months in the mountains. You no know, food, if the partisans, the one, the gorillas you call them, if they give us something to eat, okay, if not nothing, whatever, you know. And then after four months, we come back and they started wars, like uh, they took everything from us. Mm -hmm. My mom had no right to go any place. It was very tough. Oh yeah. See, most of the men in the village were killed. But then everything changed when my brother came to Canada and he brought me here. Better sweet, because he yeah, went which, through all those tough times. And which then... I never, I saw my brother was now, when I was eight years old. And I saw him here when I was 20. Mm -hmm. Talked about your journey. I kind of want to hear about uh, um, Dewey. Dewey's now a little yeah. bit. Up until that point. So, yeah. Dewey, what was it like for you growing up? Uh, okay. You should say good. Oh, <laughs> very good. Because it, it was a city. Not very big city, but about 12,000 population. Yeah. Went to public school mm -hmm. there. Then from, I went to high school. Mm -hmm. 
and I play soccer mm. during the occupation. In Florida, mm -hmm. was no problem with the German occupation. Mm -hmm. See, we got along fine. Mm -hmm. We didn't do any trouble. They didn't do trouble to us. Mm -hmm. We were okay. But further up in the mountain, wherever the partisan guerrillas, or you call them, was trouble, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, otherwise, was, everything was okay. I was playing soccer. I had good friends. I remember one time, it must have been 1943 or 1944, about six English bombers approached Florida. Wow. Yeah, and they, they bombed half of the city. Quite a few got killed. They said about 35 or 38 German soldiers were killed. Wow. But myself, my friend and I were up in the mountains so we can see nice clear. <laughs> and we got scared. I thought oh, I bet. the bombs will continue coming up. Mm -hmm. But it was okay, you know, so it was very bad. Then, in 1947, when we left Athens, mm -hmm. we left with a military plane. It's unusual, oh. unusual, eh? Okay. And then we arrived in Greenland. It was snow, a lot of snow, actually, there all the time. And from there, from Greenland, we, we arrived at Cornwall. Okay. Ontario. Or no, okay. Ontario. So that's uh, that's like what is that Kingston? Is that north of Toronto? Yeah, okay. and there was a military military base there. That's where the plane. Oh, okay. So nobody believed. How do I got we got in Canada? <laughs> you know, military plane. Military plane. You don't hear that too often in Canada during the war. You know, I mean, it was kind of unusual. I always like to talk about with you guys how. Um, the how different it was for you guys growing up how like all the horrible stuff you it guys was, went through you know you watch in syria and those places yeah. that's how it was yeah like how how bad it is over there like night time you were afraid from the gorillas they come mm -hmm. in and took horses and food and clothes because they they had nothing mm -hmm. and then as soon as you, uh, they come in you're terrified from the military police mm -hmm. it was military oh, yeah. six o'clock was curfew mm -hmm. and and you could not say a word to them because uh, that's it. I mean, a guy come in and uh, hit my mother with my brother's boots. For what reason? Mm -hmm. Just mainly we suffered for my uncle because he was, uh, he was the general of the mountains. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was tough even. Mm -hmm. Look, I was terrified from the police. It was hard here too. Mm -hmm. Coming here was no money, it was just a suitcase uh -huh. looking for a job going to work in a factory. There was no union or anything. I work in a factory. They make lingerie for women, like, you know, mm -hmm. and you work peace work and, you know, it was very tough. Mm -hmm. But then... You made it. <laughs> yeah. How, and then I met Dewey. How did you get, how did you, uh, how met. did you guys meet? Okay, I I'll met. tell you a story. My brother and I had lived we only had one bedroom and a kitchen. Mm -hmm. Like that, people, that's how they were in those days. And then we wanted to move out from there. And I work with his brother's wife. Mm -hmm. And she said that he's buying a house. His, they had a house with his sister. And she said, but they, they're going to have the apartment upstairs, like in a house, mm -hmm. you know. So I told my brother. My brother said, well, you call. So I call. He answered the phone. I did. Uh, yeah. And I said, okay, uh, you know, who are you? I don't know if I said I'm looking for the apartment. I said, who are you? He said, a guy. Well, I said, I'm a girl. Oh. And uh, so I don't know if he says, he said, well. I said, something's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And then nothing. We never, you know. And then I think it was a long time after, after six, seven months, when I met him. Okay. I went to see his uh, sister-in-law, and he was there. Okay. Just a minute, only back in six months. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said after I... In October, I bought the house. You phone in October. We met in October, three weeks later. No, I didn't need. You bought the house before October. October the 21st. <laughs> yeah, but you bought the house, you moved in or something in anyway. it. So I went to his brother's house and he was there. Okay. He was engaged to somebody else. That's right. That's right. He was engaged to somebody else. <laughs> and then I left uh, the house, you know, nothing, and then he called me. Okay. And we went, like, for a coffee, or, and then he took me to a movie, <laughs> like, I didn't understand, and he took me to this submarine movie, you know, like, with James Garner, you know, like, an award movie. 
And he called me again, and we went for dinner at the Greek restaurant there. And so we went a couple of times to a show. And I mean, we were, I didn't want to have a like uh, a romance for years or something mm -hmm. like that. I told him straight, it was in February. Mm -hmm. I said, if we are for real, if not, you know. Mm -hmm. So I told him, he had the restaurant that time. Okay. So I told my brother, I said, I met this guy, he's got a restaurant there. And my brother said, well, I have to go and see. So when my brother went there to see him there. Mm -hmm. He had his cousin or something, which he was 50, more than 50 years old, but he was a very good looking guy. Mm -hmm. And so my brother, when I come in from work, because my brother worked night, and he said, there's no way you're going to marry him. I said, why? He said, why you want to marry an old man? For what reason? You're only 20 years old. I said, no. And then he said, no, you tell him to come and meet me. <laughs> so they met somewhere. And he used to work down, down Queen Street. My, my so I went there. I, it, I knew the name. Mm -hmm. So I met him. I talked to him, everything else. And I said, I'm the guy. My name is Danny. I said, I want to married your, your sister. Mm. Oh, I said, that's okay. <laughs> you can marry my sister. <laughs> Wasn't the same guy. From the company, you know? <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, that's amazing. So, yeah. so we got engaged mm -hmm. on 31st of March, spring day. What, what year was this? Uh, 1959. 59. 59, okay. And we got married three months on uh, summer day, the first day of summer. June. We got married in June. Wow. June, the same. The same year. So, 59 you guys got married? Huh? Wait, was it? You, 59. 59. So, you guys have been together for 60 years coming up? 61 years. 61 years. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And then she's played another 20. <laughs> <laughs> I want to wind this to uh, back to, I guess I want to ask Dewey specifically about, because you opened up a bunch of restaurants over the course of like 20 years, I guess, yeah. or so. Um, and so the first one was with, you said, uh, Siwe. was, was, was my brother in law. His sister's uh, husband. Uh, so what was that? So what was it's that? Like, place. How did you guys open that up? Like, did you guys both save money and then, well, or all save when money? I was working at the restaurant at, at the James restaurant yeah. for four years there, the boss, mm -hmm. he, he was taking my half of my pay. He was putting it in the bank. Okay. He says, you're not going to spend it. You wow. It. In four years, I said $4,000. Wow. At that time. That's a uh, lot of money now. At that time, yeah. So that's how then he had a little bit of money. That's how he opened that uh, CEO restaurant, which is a small place, you know, maybe 40, 45 seats. Huh. So I, was, you, I was making $40 a week. Yeah, but okay. late. At first, you were making yeah. 20 Yeah. Uh, down at the other place in Southern, I was making $19. But okay. when I came to Toronto, I start, they started paying me $40. Okay. She was keeping 20 yeah, that's giving me twenty. For twenty dollars in those days, you to go to the streetcar, mm. you get four tickets for twenty five cents. Oh, wow! Yeah, okay. transportation. So that's cheap. that's why too. that's why you can you can live on twenty dollars. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and then there's another story. Four okay. guys they decide to go to Montreal. You know, they had all holiday, like one week a year. Oh, the guy, the or oh, the yeah. boss told me. No, they wanted on a holiday, and his brothers, his sister's husband, they weren't married that time. So four guys, but those guys, they were drinking from Florida. You know, they were kind of playboys. Hmm. So they went there, and uh, and St. Catherine Street, there all the Greek nightclub and restaurants there. Oh, okay. You know? And belly dancers. And so <laughs> they went there. They're supposed to stay a week. They went there. They were buying drinks for the belly dancers and here that. In two days, they had no money. <laughs> so they had to borrow from him to come home. Because, oh I, was, because I wasn't with them. So they come in, he says, oh, come on, give us money to, to go back. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> when did uh, you guys uh, buy your house and like decide? Well, he to... bought 1958. He I bought, bought it was before, before, before I... we got married. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. And how much was that house when you bought it? That time was 16,000. 16,000, okay. Wow, and did you oh, did you pay cash with for no, that? I would pay half cash. Half fifty percent down is still a lot of money. Oh my god! <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. That's awesome. Yeah, but he had a house together with his sister. Oh, that's right. Well, see, I got four thousand from from uh, her from my sister. Okay. My part of the house. Okay, that's right. 
So I had another four, eight, I put a down payment on their house. Oh, okay. And he paid for the wedding, for everything, because I told him I don't want a wedding, I have no parents or uh -huh. anything like that. And I said, we can just get married at the city hall. Mm -hmm. But his parents wanted a wedding because they never saw both his daughters elope and his son, their son mm -hmm. was in Greece. So I they want wanted a wedding and he paid for my wedding dress, everything because you know, mm -hmm. I didn't have money. Didn't Dewey, didn't you like start some... Sincicola. The Sincicola yeah. and like... McDonald's. And then, and then the McDonald's, is it okay if you want to talk about yeah. that? Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. okay. so, so how did that come about? How, so you're starting well, these other businesses, right? Yeah, I had another business with another guy, catering business. Okay. So serving Cokes and then coffee and then sandwiches. With and the trucks. Okay. With little trucks, so we had four of those. So one day we decided, to uh, to make the the coke the syrup, mm -hmm. so we start making the syrup instead to buy it. Mm -hmm. Then we decide to serve the restaurants with those gallons, mm -hmm. and we make labels. Since cola, it looks so much like Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah, but you bought the syrup from the states. You didn't no, make it. No, no, we, the, to we, we had to go to Rochester to get all the. <laughs> Details, everything. Anyways, so uh -huh. we start serving uh -huh. a lot of restaurants, and I don't know how the Coca Cola company found out about it. <laughs> there they come one day, you know, and from there, two of those guys. You know, one is the vice president, or whatever it is. I said, Listen, you guys, you know, you cannot use this, this one. I said, Why? He says, You know, this is since Cola, Coca Cola, same thing. He says, If you're not gonna. This continue. Never mind. They won't let us serve Coca-Cola syrup anymore. Huh. He says, if you're not, he says, we'll, we'll send you back. We're, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna report you, and I'm gonna send you back to Greece. <laughs> and I got scared. So this continue. <laughs> so if that wasn't enough, we opened a little place in Burlington. Uh huh. And uh, was our building there? We opened it. We, we made it Munch's restaurant. <laughs> Munch's, but we put the M, same as McDonald's. <laughs> same color. It looked like Munch's. It looked like McDonald's. <laughs> so we opened it for a little while. A lady came in once, I remember. She looked at it and says, says I didn't know McDonald's serves breakfast. We're serving breakfast. <laughs> so McDonald's found out about it. <laughs> That's they right. came in, in there. <laughs> so he says, You have to come to the office. Uh -huh. And I had to go on Young and Sinclair a mm -hmm. few, few days later. Mm -hmm. And we went down there. I went in there. I said, Listen, what can I. Oh, so, what are you people doing? I said, Nothing. I said, Munches. It's not a Coca Cola. I said, Not a McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, but you cannot use that one. The M. The same. The same kind, you know? Uh -huh. So uh -huh. says, You have to cover it. Mm -hmm cover it or change it. Mm -hmm. So I went to my lawyer and I said, this is what happened. He says, you can't fight those guys, it's, you know, might as well change it. Yeah. <laughs> so we changed the M. <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, on top of the building, on the roof, was a big sign there, McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> And they were paying we, for the sign. We oh collect and rent from them. That's so funny. So the whole thing was like this. <laughs> yeah, but there wasn't just a sign, a big munch. Like, uh -huh. not Big Mac, Big Munch. Big Munch. The hamburgers are the same. <laughs> what, what did you think of all those? Small, small, big Munch, the hamburgers, small hamburgers. We're serving exactly what McDonald's was serving. Yeah, <laughs> Munch muffin. We didn't like that. So, That's so well, you see these guys, okay, it was the beginning. Uh -huh. So they figured, you see, if we let this guy go, mm -hmm. I don't know, somebody will help them, mm -hmm. give him money, start opening more places. Yeah. So McDonald's didn't like that. Exactly, yeah. Uh, it, we could have been another 150, 200 restaurants uh -huh. like that. So, <laughs> so they kick us out. <laughs> That's right. No, <laughs> you guys kind of, like, this is the Canadian dream. The kind Canadian of dream, but it's not, a, believe me. It's oh, not yeah, a, I know. There's lots, so many downsides. But in terms of, if you were to look at your guy's story, you guys came here with no money. Yeah. Nothing you guys didn't speak the language. You guys came from a war, a country that was oh, yeah. horrible war. You come here, you guys. And we save and buy a house and everything. Save, buy a kids. house, open restaurants, start your own businesses. Sure, the kids, the weddings and everything, you know? Yeah. Uh, it was not, uh, but uh, like sometimes the waitresses, they were jealous. Uh, they said, 
well, you come in from somewhere else and you have a house and we live in Ontario house, you know, mm -hmm. right? well, save money, don't go on a holiday, mm -hmm. don't drink, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody, oh, we went there last night. Oh, we didn't go there. Mm -hmm. Just stay home, you know. And I, I cook, I iron. He used to, he had to wear just white shirts to a restaurant and a tie. And there was these irons we have now, mm -hmm. you know. So I had to come home from work. And I, when I work in the factory, like after time was born, I started. I never made it there eight o'clock because 6.30 was the first bus from Scarborough, two tickets mm -hmm. to get to the exhibition. That's mm -hmm. where I work. Mm -hmm. And it took me like more than an hour and a half. Never made it at eight o'clock. And one day the bus called me, it was a Jewish guy, and he said, uh, you, I said, okay. I kept the transfers. I had to change one, two, three to get to work. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't make it. And I work peace work. Mm -hmm. If you want to fire me, you can fire me. You know, that's mm -hmm. nothing I can do. So it wasn't easy, you know? Mm -hmm. so, and and when they asked me to work overtime till eight o'clock, I never got home till 10.30. And, and I have to start preparing mm -hmm. for Tommy, like milk and this. And, I, and how many times his mother stayed downtown. Mm -hmm. at his, and I had to pick up Tommy six thirty in the morning you know, baby to take him there. So it was an easy life. Oh yeah, it sounds... It was very hard. That's why for the Canadian people, like for you guys who are born here, you should not complain. Because mm -hmm. if you want to make it, you'll make it. Mm -hmm. Only if you're lazy, if you want to have a just good time. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make it, but for us, mm -hmm. it was very tough. Mm -hmm. It was very tough. So if you had to say something, Think to young people today. Like, what do you think of young people today? Like people my age, maybe Gray's age, who's I think I think uh, young people. I sympathize with them because they have a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Because what their parents did, they couldn't accomplish, mm -hmm. and they want too many things. Mm -hmm. Like they want to have a car, they want to have a computer, they want to have the, and they want to have a good time. They want to go. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You have to cut down something. Mm -hmm. So. If you want to make it, you have to work hard. Mm -hmm. Because if not, you're going to live in Ontario house in all your life. Mm -hmm. Th that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not against people living there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, we want to have more kids. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't. Mm -hmm. Because you can't afford to have more kids. Mm -hmm. So young people, they should stay in school, work part-time here and there, and don't look for too many things. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you want to make it. Mm -hmm. You have the, the opportunities here. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. saying, no, you have the opportunities to make it. Mm -hmm. Only if you wanted to, mm -hmm. if you're determined. Do you think, do you agree with that too, Dewey? Yep. Do you have uh, anything you'd like to the same thing? Nothing, as I said, cut down on spending. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that uh, at least a lot of people that I know struggle with is that, like I know so many people that like to go like to have one to two i know some people that go on like three plus vacations a year uh -huh. yeah i made a whole video on this actually about how young people today have way more expenses some of which are necessary like to be a young person today you need to have the internet for most people's jobs you need to have the internet today so that's another 150 to 100 dollars mm -hmm. um you need to most yeah, young, yeah so cell phone bill that's another 50 hundred dollars um I went through a couple of things now, like it costs a lot of money to go to school now, mm -hmm. um, especially in the United States. Like, have you guys seen that? Like student? forty fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year? Yeah. 75 that, uh, you know? Yeah. So that there, young people today do have more expenses, but we also spend money a lot worse too. Unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. So like there's this, it's both all added on. Cause I know people today that, I mean, this should be a whole. We should make a whole. We should do this next time we talk. Actually, because so I was going to mention how it's all. It's not almost impossible. It's impossible today for someone in their mid to late twenties to buy a place in Toronto. No. Oh yeah, it, it's impossible. Not just Toronto. Even in Kitchener, Waterloo, even in Oakville, Oakville. Because to save mm -hmm. that, what is twenty five percent? You have to put down or more? Yeah, now it's twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yeah. Well, to save twenty percent on a million dollars home. Yeah, it's two hundred grand plus the. Where are you going to save? It's actually you have to save about probably two twenty because there's the lawyer fees, the mm -hmm. real estate, all that stuff. But yeah, what about the mortgage? Yeah, and then the mortgage too. That's how many thousands a month, right? And so for 
that's one of the things where the real estate prices have gone up pretty crazy. Um, but also young people today aren't saving. It's this weird, like two bad things happened for the same thing. But yeah, I think that's going to wrap this up for now. I, I'd like to do this again with you guys. Cause we have a bunch more. We could probably anytime, talk about anytime. 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 But yeah, thank you very much for sitting down. Well, thank you for being interested in our lives. Oh yeah, of course. And you know, we love you very much. Love we you wish too. you nothing but the best. Oh yeah, thank you very much. I hope you make a lot of money and live not the way we live, like to be afraid to buy things uh -huh. because we still do that. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that costs too much money, we're not buying. Mm -hmm. So I hope mm -hmm. you make, uh, don't hope for too much to be rich. Mm -hmm. As long as you're happy, you have enough. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, guys. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, and we're done. Thank you uh, very much. <laughs>